So far, we've been talking about trees that are involved in classification, either crisp classification or probabilistic classification. But there is a whole other class of trees called uh, regression trees that allow us to output not a class, but some sort of continu continuous value. So the most common form of a regression tree is one that uh, outputs a constant value for any sample that falls down into a particular leaf. So what this ends up giving us is a piecewise constant uh, function defined over the feature space. The more general case, we can actually put a function over the full feature vector uh, in each of the leaf nodes. So, so each leaf node gets its own function that, that gets learned. This allows us to have a much more expressive uh, type of function as compared to, say, the same form of function defined over the entire uh, feature space but it does give us a lot more uh, complexity. So let's look at a bit of the um, math uh, around regression trees, at least the simple form, and then we'll do a, a simple uh, example in drawing form. Just as with our other regression approaches, we still have a training set that's composed of pairs of samples. So we have uh, a set xj, and that is associated with some sort of an output value. Here, we're just going to focus on the scalar form of this. Of course, y could be a vector in and of itself. So we're going to measure the performance of our regression tree just as we have with our other uh, approaches uh, using mean squared error. So that's just our sum of our j's. And there are m of those. And it's a difference between our uh, true label and the, the, uh, the value that is output by our regression tree. So that's what this y hat is here. OK, before we take this further, let's look at what a decision tree actually uh, does here. So, so as we've uh, already discussed, we, we start at some sort of a root node. Uh, below that is a question node that brings us to uh, a set of branches which each have their own, potentially, their own question nodes, and, and on down the line. And ultimately, there's down at the bottom here, there's a set of leaf nodes. I'm going to refer to this one as leaf zero. And uh, this is leaf, leaf one. So those two are, are right next to each other. Somewhere along the line, there's a, a leaf. I'm going to use little k for, to uh, indicate this leaf. And then on the far right-hand side, there's another leaf node here. They don't ha all have to be at the same depth. I just happen to be drawing them that way. I'm going to uh, call this one leaf big K, and hopefully that's clear the difference between the little K and the big K. Actually, it's big K minus one, so that we have a total of big K uh, leaves. Now, if we take our training set, a particular training sample, it's, it's going to wind its way uh, down this tree and ultimately end up at some leaf. And then another training sample might end up coming down to leaf K, and some other one might find its way down to the, the one on the very far uh, right-hand side. So, so in some sense, our, our tree is uh, sorting all of the, the samples in our training set into this, these distinct leaves. So, so I'm going to introduce another uh, symbol here. I'm going, to refer to, I'm going to refer to the set of all samples that fall into leaf zero as big L zero. And, uh, here, L1, L little k, and this is L big k minus 1. So this is uh, all xj uh, that Okay, so, so big L1 is uh, the set of all xj that fall into leaf number one. It's a set, so we can, we can also measure the size of this set. So this is equal to the number of uh, xj's 
that fall into this leaf. All right, so with the sorting, what we're going to do is separate the elements of the sum into individual sums, one for each of our leaf nodes. Actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna come down come down here where I have a little bit more space. So, so this is equal to a sum over all of our leaf nodes. So it's the little k going from zero to big K minus one. And then within that leaf node, there's a set of uh, samples within that leaf node. We're going to sum over those. And the way I'm going to designate that is is J is a member of, of L little k. So we're going to sum over all of the, the, the J's that are in the kth leaf. And then we still have our yj minus our yj hat squared. We haven't changed our mean squared error. We've just reorganized this set of sums. We've split them up into the individual leaf nodes and then taken a sum over over all the elements within that leaf node. Okay, so let's clean this decision tree up just a little bit. Let me now introduce uh, the function that we're going to represent in each of our leaf nodes. Uh, as I said before, we're going to capture the simplest form. So, so we're going to just introduce a simple constant. So this is going to be C0. Uh, this one will be C1. This is C... C little k, and this is C big k minus one. And what I mean by this is that if a sample does indeed fall down into this leaf node, then what our regression tree is going to do is output this continuous value, C1. Or if uh, some other uh, element xj falls down into leaf little k, then the regression tree is going to output this constant c little k. So when we when we uh, consider things in this way, we can we can replace this element here with the value that we're actually predicting. So let me rewrite this. So this is, again is the sum over all the leaf nodes. And then we're going to take a sum over all the elements in the, the leaf node. And it's yj minus c little k. All right, so with this form of our cost function, we can actually then talk about what is the right choice for all of our c k's. So, so we're assuming here that we have a particular tree structure already in place. We've sorted all of our training set elements into our leaf nodes, and, and now we can ask how best to choose the, the CKs. And the answer to that is, is we're going to choose our CK in this way. Okay, so, so we're taking a sum should be a little bit more precise about that sum there. Taking a sum over all of the j's in LK, of the y's, and then we're dividing it by the number of elements that we have in this set. And, and this is, hopefully you recognize that this is just the average uh, yj Uh, in leaf K. So, so that's that's the answer for those of you who want to uh, do the derivation. Let me show you what the uh, the path is. If you imagine uh, taking our MSE and computing the derivative of MSE, the partial derivative with respect to some C K. And if you set that to zero and, and then solve for CK, then you, you end up with uh, this solution over here. So I, 
I encourage you to, to give that a shot. All right, given that background, let's consider a, uh, what happens when we try to introduce a new split to a tree. So the uh, scenario is I have already some, some particular leaf node. And I'm going to define the mean squared error for this leaf node as being equal to the average error of those things that have fallen down into the leaf node. That's a little k there. And now we're imagining transitioning to, to taking this leaf node and expanding it out. So we still have some number of things that are coming down and some number of items in our training set coming down this particular link. But now we're introducing a question of, of some form that produces in the binary tree case, two branches and two other leaf nodes. So over here on the left-hand side, we had L, K things that have fallen down into this leaf node. We're going to designate the things that have fallen into the left leaf node as L, K prime, and the things that have fallen down into the right-hand side as L, K double prime. And the, the, uh, the intersection, of course, of, of these two sets here is, is the null set because every sample has to fall to the left or to the right, and the union is equal to our LK over here. So let's start with our mean squared error definition for uh, element K here. And I'm, this is going to evolve a little bit, so I'm going to add a little hat here, but that again is equal to what we have uh, over here. Okay, so, so these, these two cost functions are identical. What we're going to do is split this particular uh, sum into the constituent parts, the uh, K prime and the K double prime uh, parts. So I'm gonna leave myself some room here. So that is equal to, we still have our one over size of LK. And it's going to be now a sum over all of the elements in L K prime, Y J, and this is now C K prime. So we have a, a C K prime now here, and a C K double prime, and we had a C K over uh, in our original model. And then we also have to take the sum over the elements on the, uh, the right-hand side. And there's a squared element there. Okay, so if CK, if CK prime and CK double prime, if those are exactly the same value, then this total sum here collapses back down to this sum here. We're now uh, talking about what our error is now that we've added this, uh, this new pair of leaf nodes. All right, I'm, I'm just going to reorganize this just a little bit. And I'm going to multiply this sum here by one. And I'm gonna write it in a particular way here, but hopefully it's obvious where I'm going with this. And then we have our sum. And then there's the other piece for which I'm running out of room. 
So this is LK double prime times one over LK double prime size. There's a squared there. Okay, so, so the motivation for doing this is now, uh, is, is that, sorry, this piece right here, if we stare at that, that is just the mean squared error, prediction error for all the elements in LK prime. And likewise, this piece right here is our mean squared error for all of the elements in, in uh, L double, uh, K double prime. So let me let me go ahead and rewrite things. So this is one over LK. And inside we have size of LK prime times the MSE of K prime and size of LK double prime times MSE of k double prime. And, and then the last step uh, is to just push this uh, inside. And I'm just going to uh, modify the equation to, to reflect that rather than rewriting. OK, so, so our new MSE that we started with up here, it can be expressed as a weighted sum of the MSEs of the, uh, the, the two new leaf nodes. So there's, there's this MSE and there's the, the other one there. Uh, the, the sum of these two here, uh, if you work that out, the sum of those two is one. So it is literally a weighted average of the two mean squared errors. Okay, so so now let's let's uh, talk about what is our improvement. So we started with this MSE here that we've measured. And then we went and computed uh, this MSE hat uh, based on the idea of introducing one new question and this new pair of leaf nodes. So we'll just call that delta MSE. And that is MSE K minus uh, MSE, oops. MSE uh, hat K. And this MSE hat K, of course, is this uh, expression right here. So this can become our, our measure of uh, how good a particular split is, uh, is going to be. So, so this is measuring how much, how much better our predictions are uh, when we add the splits in the two new leaf nodes. If, uh, if delta MSE is small, then this, this means that uh, the split is not, uh, is uh, not helpful. Nice formal definition there. Uh, if it's large, then, then we have a good improvement. So then our, what our greedy algorithm is going to do is uh, it's going to work through our tree and attempt expanding perhaps each one of our uh, existing leaf nodes figuring out what the new question should be and then computing what the new CKs should be and then asking how much does this split actually help? And the, the greedy algorithm says, let's look at delta MSE as a means of evaluating uh, which of those splits we're actually going to choose. We'll pick the one with the, the highest delta MSE and, and then continue from there.
of course, if the largest delta MSE uh, is very small, then we're going to want to uh, stop our uh, expansion. And, and this is one of those places where, uh, where regularization can come in. That is the, the idea behind uh, regression trees, at least the simple form. Let's do a, a simple uh, example. And what we'll do is draw out a data set here and then uh, pick a, uh, grow a tree that tries to capture this data set. So let's put some samples. I guess I should say that this is our feature and this is our output here, Y. So those are our true, true labels. Okay, so there's, there's some uh, samples there. All right, so let's, let's go ahead and start with our, our first tree. And that's going to uh, just have the root node and, the, and one leaf node. And, and so our C here is going to be equal to the average Y over all of our points. And I'm just going to eyeball this here, but uh, that average Y looks to be, say, about right uh, there. So that's, if this is the origin here, then two, four, six, that's uh, C is equal to uh, eight here. So that's not a particularly nice uh, approximation of the, this data set. And so the question is, where should we start to institute our splits? Now, if we were to pick, say, a split down the middle here, if we kind of stare at the, the average values on the left and the right-hand side, those don't change a whole lot. We might, we might end up coming down just a little bit here, uh, but we probably wouldn't change this all that much. So the improvement in our ability to uh, produce the right Ys is, is not really uh, all that great. Our delta MSE is not all that great. Um, but if we were to, say, choose uh, a different dividing line, so for example, we might pick this one right here, that corresponds to adding a question over here where we now ask whether x0 is greater than or equal to 3. And uh, the nose, so those are the things on the left-hand side, uh, is this set of points over here. And the average of those probably sits, say, about right here. Oops, that's supposed to be a horizontal line. So the new leaf node here says that we want our C uh, to be equal to, say, 3.5. And down the left-hand branch, our C probably hasn't changed very much, uh, but it does necessarily uh, have to migrate a little bit. So we might, have, might end up about here. So now C is not 8, but C is 8.5. Okay, so, so now we have... We actually have a reasonable approximation for what's going on over here, but we still have a, a large amount of uh, error on, on this side here. So the next step in our uh, tree learning algorithm, we're end, going to end up uh, considering a, a change on the uh, left-hand side down this yes branch here. So did not intend to remove the branch. But now we're going to introduce a new uh, question. And uh, it's a good question as to what we should uh, actually choose. I'm going to, um, let's pick a different color here. I'm going to make a choice, uh, say, uh, about right here. So this is uh, x0 is greater than or equal to 8.5. And that has a no branch and a yes branch. For the, for the no branch now, the average is probably sitting about right in here. And the, the yes branch necessarily has moved down a, a bit. So let's go ahead and draw it in about right there. So no now sits at no now sits at uh, I don't know, 10.4. And yes now sits at seven.
we're doing an okay job now of sort of capturing here, um, but we still have a fair amount of, of error uh, over on this side. Uh, so let's go ahead and induce a new, uh, a new split. And that again is down the yes branch. So let's figure out where that threshold ought to be. So if I were to say, add a split right, uh, right here at 10, then our average uh, is probably sitting right about in here. And our average for, for the yes branch is probably, probably hasn't changed a, a whole lot. So down the, the no branch, the C is, is 9.2 or so. And down the yes branch, it's not changed a, a whole lot. So we're at about 6.8. If we were to split again, and I'm not, we're not gonna walk uh, through this, but the next split probably is best uh, about right in here. And what that would allow us to do is to kind of capture this, this, really, this constant region here and then capture this region uh, out in here. And, and then once we've uh, made improvements there, then one can start to imagine really addressing what's going on here and, and then maybe address some of the finer details uh, out on the left-hand side there. But that at least gives you a, a sense of what tree growth uh, might actually uh, look like in a regression tree. All right, so next up, uh, it's time to do a little bit of uh, code around this, uh, th this type of algorithm. 